Now, until 45 after, we're going to be joined by Lou Rockwell. Then I'll go to Peter, Lance, Tom, Anthony, Brett, uh, and others that are holding patiently. I will get to your calls, so, so stay on hold uh, if you still want to get on air. Appreciate you calling in. want to hear what you have to say. In the time we've got, Lou Rockwell of LouRockwell.com with us today, I want to cover the waterfront. I want to get into uh, his latest article, Limited Government, Is It a Vain Hope? I want to get his take on Rand Paul uh, endorsing tentatively airstrikes against ISIS. Uh, I want to get his uh, breakdown on all these racial attacks happening in the U.S. Uh, with the media basically hyping them, how he thinks we can stop that. And so much more with Lou Rockwell of LouRockwell.com. I don't really need to introduce Lou Rockwell to folks, but he, of course, has been Ron Paul's chief of staff, helped getting him into Congress to begin with. He's a libertarian, political commentator, activist, proponent of the Austrian School of Economics, and chairman of the Lubin von Mies Institute. And uh, again, he's one of the top libertarians in the world. And he uh, opposes uh, communism, imperialism, all forms of centralized megastate. Um, and he joins us. LouRockwell.com again is the website. Lou, so much to cover. What do you want to tackle first? Well, Alex, we can you know maybe talk about Mayor Nagan just for a second. Uh, it's it's my view that all politics is corrupt. All government is corrupt. So when they pick out a guy like Nagan, uh, I think this was true of Blagojevich in Illinois too. It seems to me he's offended somebody important in the government because it's not that he's corrupt. They're all corrupt. The mayor of New York is corrupt, the mayor of Boston is corrupt, the mayor of Chicago is corrupt. Their governments are all just, you know, as, as Murray Rothbard said, government is a gang of thieves writ large. So that's certainly true of municipal governments, state governments, federal government, they're all corrupt. So Mayor Nagan did something to somebody. He, he uh, offended somebody in power. That's why he's going to prison, not because he's corrupt. Well, sure, if they'd arrested the board members of the Federal Reserve and arrested these big arms company heads and mercenary leaders who've been involved in all this corruption, if they went after Wells Fargo for money laundering, then when they got down to Nagan, I'd say, wow, we've got a good government here. But no, no, no. They, they literally, I think, just make examples out of people uh, who don't follow orders. Well, sure, that, that, that's, that's an important part of it as well. But you're right about the merchants of death. I mean, what about the relationship between the companies that make vast sums of money off killing people? Uh, the military industrial complex is, one, is another phrase for it. And uh, so they're pro always promoting war. That's one of the key, aside from the Pentagon and the CIA and the government agencies, it's the big private corporations in league with the government uh, that promote these horrendous war policies and are now you know, wanting us to bomb ISIS wanting to uh, uh, bomb Syria, to overthrow Assad, the last non-jihadist uh, 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 Arab leader in, in power. They want to get rid of him, uh, just like they got rid of Saddam Hussein and they got, got rid of uh, uh, Gaddafi. And Why Libya. do they want jihadis in? Because they want trouble. This is, all, this is an ancient imperial tactic. Governments that are imperial governments love trouble. They promote trouble. Uh, they, because, of course, it justifies their policies to the people at home. Oh, look out. There are all those terrorists over there. That's why we have to, uh, you know, take your children, uh, take all your money, take your freedom, and take your life. Uh, so it's to justify, you know, it's to justify their wars and their, con and their unbelievable spending, all the taxes, uh, all the inflation, all the horrible things they do with the effects, as you point out, of, you know, so few people being able to have jobs. Uh, and of course, all the depredations of the of the bankocracy. Uh, so many, many different things, bad things connected to the government. And we're supposed to, you know, it's considered uh, highly uh, politically incorrect to say there are people who make money off war, vast, vast sums of money. Whether it's Martin Marietta or Lockheed or just you know, got on the list of all these of all these companies. Just like there are many companies that make money off the police state. There's a there's a security uh, industrial complex. There's a prison industrial complex. So these, it's very, and, and, and government tends to be, as an institution, pretty stupid. However, the big companies that are associated with it and are making vast sums of money, they're not stupid. And they come up with these policies. They come up, they came up, you know, with, they love this, uh, the war on terror. From their standpoint, all the other wars had a bad effect. They ended. Which exactly. Is a terrible thing. I remember seeing uh, George H.W. Bush and Jim Baker on television after the fall of the Berlin Wall. These guys were white-faced. 
They were so obviously unhappy. Rather than celebrating the end of communism, uh, they were worried about what would happen to the entire U.S. imperial system if it didn't have the bogeyman of communism to keep pointing to. So they came up with terrorism, a war, as uh, Sibel Edmonds pointed out the other day, can never be won, can never be won, and it can never stop. Uh, because there always might be a terrorist someplace, even if there's no action. It's the perfect phantom. And so if uh, you don't have a big jihadi problem, well, give them weapons in Libya, give them weapons in Syria, let them come into Iraq. You know, if they don't uh, paint by the numbers and get into an area they're not supposed to be, bomb them. But isn't it wearing thin, Lou Rockwell? It's gotten so obvious now that that the system is arming and creating these people, that if ISIS does end up shooting down airliners with these impads, if they do end up attacking the West with our borders wide open, that the politicians might actually get in trouble? Or do they have such a low view of the public's awareness that they don't care? Because as we saw last year, it was beautiful. Our military led the charge, saying, and this show led the charge, and Lou Rockwell led the charge. And I'm not bragging, I'm just telling folks we were able to get something done where... The world said, and Rand Paul said, and Cruz said, and Ron Paul said, let's not be Al-Qaeda's Air Force. And so that war didn't happen. Now, I understand what Rand Paul's saying. ISIS is running around murdering Christians in mass, trying to overthrow Syria. And he said, I, I think we should hit them now, but you helped arm them, Obama. The reason, and again, I don't ever support war. And I'm, I'm just saying tacitly, I get what Rand Paul is saying, and he added the proper proviso, by the way, we armed these people, this is wrong. So if we saw people arrested at the State Department who were behind this, if we saw a public apology, if we saw uh, congressional hearings, like with Nixon promising to never arm Al-Qaeda again, or anybody else for that matter that's extremist or whatever, then I would be for stopping them. But as you said... The people that run the policy, they just want to keep it going forever. Well, we have to remember, as you pointed out, Al-Qaeda is a creation of the U.S. government. When the U.S. was uh, have this, this running this proxy war against the Russians in Afghanistan, in which they were successful at tossing the Russians out, and uh, it was a good thing for the people of Afghanistan. Then, of course, the U.S. went in um, uh, even, wor even worse than the Russians. But they gathered every Islamist crazy in the world. Osama bin Laden was there funded by the Saudi Arabians, run by the U.S. to get, to get these are the so-called Mujahideen, remember them? The freedom fighters, hey, those were, those were great guys. They were being touted in Washington as, as wonderful people. Uh, so that was, that was a U.S. creation. ISIS is another U.S. creation. Uh, ISIS was armed by the U.S. to try to overthrow uh, the Syrian government. And uh, then they move out, you know, and then uh, nobody worries about uh, all the beheadings that take place in Saudi Arabia every day. Those are perfectly okay. And so beheadings, I'm certainly against all forms of capital punishment, although whether a beheading is actually worse than, let's say, a two-hour lethal injection in Oklahoma, might, you know, maybe is another question. So, uh, of course, these killings are horrendous. If we, you know, if we're to believe them, if, we, if we're to believe they're not, it's just not war propaganda uh, phonied up. Uh, as to Christians being killed, where have these politicians been when Christians were being massacred and ethnically cleansed out of Iraq for years? This has been going on for years in Iraq. Nobody cared. Now all of a sudden it's a good device to go to war, so they're talking about the Christians. Well, um, why do I, why do I, why I'm not, why, why don't I believe them? I think it's just a tool. They want war. Uh, there's vast, again, vast. Exactly. The people running things are bad. And so no matter what we do, no matter if we try to say, let's have a humanitarian war, an oxymoron, they will always just use it to start the next war. So it's like the ring of Mordor. It cannot be used for good. Well, you know, it's it's killing. I mean, it's 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 actually murder. It's mass murder is what war is. And of course, the vast majority of people killed in every war are civilians, not soldiers. Uh, so. People are, who are advocating war are advocating massacring innocents. And we're supposed to think those are good guys. We're supposed to think that, uh, uh, you know, salute them. I noticed none, none of them ever went in the military, of course. Uh, they didn't go fight anything. But they want to send other guys to go fight, women to fight too. And uh, they want to kill a lot of innocents. They want to cause much more hatred of the U.S., which they love that because it stimulates more warfare. You're right. You're right. Lou Rockwell's right. We'll be right back. Stay with us. 
Silver has always been nature's very own antibiotic, and only one system allows you to generate an endless supply of natural silver solutions. Silverlungs.com. You'll find no wild claims or pseudoscience, just a lifetime of nano-sized pure silver solutions. The Silver Lungs generator allows you to make your own, so stop paying for silver solutions. The unique lung delivery system targets respiratory infections where other silver solutions simply cannot reach. See the Silver Lungs generator and lung delivery system at Silverlungs.com. That's Silverlungs.com. In today's unstable environment, self-protection is critical. Civil unrest, riots, looting, it's happening now, right here in the United States, and your rights are at risk. If passed, H.R. 5344 would ban Level 3 and above body armor. Katie Armor is standing up for you. We offer the most affordable Level 3 body armor on the market. Katie Level 3 armor withstands pistol and rifle hits up to 762 NATO. Get yours at katiearmor.com. That's C-A-T-I armor.com. Katie Armor, come and take it. This is an announcement for all people who want to take a risk-free challenge to whiten their teeth in five minutes. By calling now, you can whiten your teeth in five minutes using clinically proven power swabs. This risk-free challenge is for people whose smile has been yellowed by coffee, tea, red wine, or smoking. The Power Swabs 5-Minute Challenge is available by responding to this advertisement. If lines are busy, try again. Because the Power Swabs 5-Minute Challenge is exclusive, it's not available in drugstores. Power Swabs was formulated by Dr. Martin Ginniger and whitens teeth with a patented tooth detergent and whitening agent. It's so effective, we challenge you to try it for 5 minutes to see how white your smile could be. Get it risk-free. Dial 1-800-281-6805. That's one 1- 800-281-6805. Transform your smile into a wow, you look great smile. Dial 1-800-281-6805. That's 1-800-281-6805. For all our loyal listeners, Calvin Soap Company is proud to offer a month-long Labor Day sale. Get the Superstar 1200 Collection, 65 pounds of bars, laundry, dish soap, and shampoo. Ship freight free to the lower 48 at 5starsoap.com or enter to win the same Superstar 1200 Collection at GCNlive.com. The Superstar 1200 Collection is estimated to last up to two years and save up to $1,000. Sale and contest ends September 30th. Happiness is 5starsoap.com. My Magic Mud is a tooth whitening powder that removes plaque and detoxifies your mouth. It's safe for your enamel, giving you a beautiful polish and a dentist-like clean after every use. My Magic Mud is also the perfect remedy for pain caused by sensitivity. It strengthens your teeth and gums for a strong, healthy smile. The ingredients are 100% natural and it's safe for children. Simply brush with My Magic Mud right before bedtime for a cleaning you can count on. Visit MyMagicMud.com. Attention all listeners, are you ready for a free stock market webinar with PhilzGang.com? Join us September 13th at 12 noon Eastern for this live PhilzGang.com free webinar valued at $75. You'll learn how to protect your principal in this Federal Reserve controlled low interest rate market by identifying moves before they happen. To register, simply go to LearnStocksForFree.com. LearnStocksForFree.com. Or call 877-600-4264. Promo code GCN. 877-600-4264. Promo code GCN. This is an alert. If your business or church is building this year, you're about to pay more than you should. This could mean thousands of dollars more for your office, retail space, church, or warehouse. A general steel building can save you as much as half the cost and time of similar conventional construction. And we're offering rebates of up to $20,000 to help you build today. Call General Steel for free information that could save you thousands. Call 866-91-STEEL. 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. say gang with a flag. I forget who said that. I bet Lou Rockwell can remind me. Alex Jones here back live. But more and more we see that our government is degenerating. And as you get a big unaccountable government, it becomes like an ecosystem or a coral reef where all these corrupt psychopathic eels and mercenaries and control freaks can hide and feed on people. That's the kind of civilization that we're becoming. We lost his Skype feed. We're going to reconnect with Lou Rockwell right now. But I wanted to get his view on the state of the empire, the state of government worldwide, and talk about his new book as well, Against the State. 
Because here's the deal. We know big government doesn't work. And we know the bigger it gets, the more peril everyone is in. And the whole basic mission of Infowars.com and what we do here is to get back to principles that we know work. But we can't even get to basic American principles, much less libertarian principles, as we're being drug at light speed towards total statism. Uh, Lou Rockwell, uh, I wanted to ask you, as just kind of one of the grand poobahs of libertarian thinking, who was it that said uh, the state is a gang with a flag? Uh, Alex, I wish that had been I. I, I. I frankly don't know. It certainly is true. Uh, it is a, the state is a criminal gang, and uh, it's we can think of war as just being government, uh, because everything that government does overseas in terms of wars on a on a mass scale, it does on a slightly smaller scale to us at home. Uh, it's got its guns. It's uh, putting guns at us all the time. It's ordering us to do things, or otherwise they're going to put us in a cage, or they'll kill us. And uh, they want to grab our money. We're not. They get they get to decide how much of our money that we earn. They get to they get to take. It's it's like the mafia. Although I hate to uh, compare the government to the mafia. The mafia is of course a much better. So what is the state of the world right now? Then I mean, for Team Liberty versus Team Tyranny. Well, you know, since all of human history, this is this has been a fight that's gone on. Um, I think it's actually. Many good things happening all over the world. You mentioned the, re the rejection of the dollar. One of the key aspects of the American empire has been forcing other countries to use the dollar. Uh, all the oil company, all producing countries to uh, price their oil in, in dollars. Typically, if countries have not wanted to do that, they get bombed. Uh, Saddam Hussein and you know, many, many other people. Uh, Saddam Hussein, the great promoter and protector of Christians, by the way, in Iraq, um, but nobody cared about getting rid of him and uh, allowing the Christians to all be massacred. So this is, you know, this is uh, this is the way government operates. And uh, I think there's, I think th there's a lot of interest in freedom. I think it's a tremendous thing that apparently the people of Scotland, with my fingers crossed, are going to vote for independence from uh, from England. Uh, that would be a very very good thing. It's anything, any secession. Any decentralization, any place in the world is good for the cause of liberty. And I think young people all over the world, think of all the young people who listen to your show, uh, young people are realizing that the government has really worked them over. Uh, here they are a lot of times graduating from college with a degree that doesn't do them any good. They've got the vast debt. They're worried about being able to get a job. Uh, maybe they're having to live with their parents. They're all realizing that things are wrong. Things have gone wrong. Uh, and again, we live under the biggest, richest, most powerful government in the history of the world by many magnitudes, the U.S. government. But it's also the biggest bureaucracy ever to exist. And bureaucracy is inefficient. Bureaucracy has got many, many problems in, in operation. So I think the government is a lot less strong than it would have us believe. That's why they're uh, announcing to us that they're uh, listening to all our phone calls and emails and this radio show to High NSA. And uh, uh, it's why they... Um, are stepping up the taxes. That's why they're stepping up their wars. Uh, but I think because people are people are not believing the government. People don't uh, don't want this war against ISIS. It's why these beheading videos have been put on in order to promote the war and get Americans to go along with it. Americans, as you pointed out, thanks to you and others of us who didn't want the war against Syria, the government Obama was not able to launch that war. Now, of course, they're trying the the ISIS thing, and they claim, "Well, don't worry, they're not going to be American troops on the ground. We're just going to bomb everybody uh, from the air." Well, that you know, it's it's a funny thing about people in other countries. They don't like being bombed. Uh, Iraq has been bombed by the U.S. since 1991. You know, no. <laughs> so, do people turn into what they call terrorists? Although terrorism, of course, is simply war. It's war by a non-state entity. Uh, it's the same sort of tactics as governments use. They call it war. They wear uniforms. They have their flags, as you say. They have their medals. Uh, they're patriotic. They're wonderful. Uh, we should all salute them and, and uh, uh, give them our seats in the, uh, in the airport and so forth. Uh, but really, terrorists are exactly the same. Maybe they don't wear a uniform, but they, uh, terrorism is war. Um, again, by a non-government like ISIS or... Well, uh, yeah, real terrorism is funding Al-Qaeda and then acting like a hero and making our troops go fight them. Lou Rockwell's our guest. Stay with us. We'll be back. We're on the march. The Empire's on We're the march. We're going to talk about... Uh,
Alex Jones and the GCN and Radio Network. Aggressive police take hundreds of millions of dollars from motorists not charged with crimes. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. Most people know that iodine deficiency has been a crisis around the world. Iodine is key to so many of the body's functions, especially the thyroid. I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, and the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off Super Detox Special at InfoWarsLife.com. Open your eyes. It's time to give your eyes a powerful nutritional boost. Sight is the primary input to the brain, arguably making eyesight the most important sense we have. And just like the other important organs in our bodies, our eyes function at peak levels when they are fed the proper amounts of essential nutrition. Open your eyes. Combining key ingredients like vitamin A, zinc, lutein, proprietary saffron bulb extracts, and more, OccuPower by InfoWars Life is a new formulation specifically designed to nutritionally assist the natural function of healthy eyes. Optimize the natural power of your eyes with the latest addition to the super high quality InfoWars Life formulations, OccuPower. Go to InfoWarsLife.com or InfoWarsStore.com to order OccuPower or call 1-888-253-3139. OccuPower, open your eyes. The government's Department of Homeland Security is buying up loads of ammo. At the same time, they're restricting civilians' rights to own and purchase firearms. Can you put two and two together? Infidel Body Armor can stop every round, including hollow points and 308 sniper rounds. Is reasonably priced and fully legal. But for how long? Go to InfidelBodyArmor.com, spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L, BodyArmor.com. Infidel Body Armor just won't quit. I'm David Hall, founder of Diamond Gusset, where we are proud of our 100% grown and sewn American-made jeans. Whether you're out for dinner, working on the farm, or on the road, Diamond Gusset Jeans offers a full spectrum of style and sizes for any occasion. Our loyal customers enable us to continue sponsoring Liberty Media outlets. Use promo code FREEDOM to receive a 15% discount at gusset.com. In Liberty, David Hall, Diamond Gusset Jean Company. To an InfoWars.com frontline report. It's Alex Jones. I want to get a little bit more into war with Lou Rockwell, then some other issues, and then we're going to go uh, to your phone calls. I also want to talk some about his new book that's coming out. I definitely want to read it. I've read some of his other works that are excellent. But before we go any further, both of my grandfathers were in World War II, as a lot of people's grandparents were, great-grandparents. Most of that generation's gone now. Uh, and Hitler was obviously a bad guy. He was attacking people. He was going to try to take over the world. The problem is, it's just like it's happening now. It's historical fact that the robber barons... There's New York Times best-selling Pulitzer Prize-winning books. Shears, Rise and Fall of the Third Reich... IBM and the Holocaust, I mean, it goes on and on, that U.S. and British companies literally helped put him in power, promote his eugenics ideology. He was in Time magazine. He was in gardening magazines. I'm making a documentary about it. We've actually sent off and bought the original magazines on store shelves. My grandfather, growing up in Dallas, my mom's dad, remembers they would play Hitler speeches on the big radio stations. WBAP, you name it, and translated into English like it was wonderful. It's a big German community up there. My grandfather's German, was German. I mean, an American, been here for a long time, but German roots. And 
his dad could speak German and could act, didn't have to hear the translation. I mean, Adolf Hitler was on the radio in America as a rock star. Folks don't know that because people don't know their history. So it's the same thing. Create Al-Qaeda, fund them, sponsor them, give them weapons. It's an AFP today that our government and the Saudis armed them with anti-tank missiles, M-16s, made in USA is the headline from AFP. So I get Rand Paul saying, yeah, they're running all over the Middle East, killing everybody. We need to stop them. But it, it, it's the oxymoron. Our government turned them loose to kill hundreds of thousands in Syria. Now they've run back over. They are, of all the unsavory killers out there, some of the most nasty. And so I want to stop them. But it doesn't matter. It's always turned to evil. So the same thing. Should we have then fought Hitler? I understand that we help create him, then knock him down. Uh, it's the same thing here. But here we know it's premeditated. So how do you deal with that being anti-war when, okay, we created ISIS. But at the same time, I don't think Obama even wants to bomb him. I think public pressure, because we now know what ISIS is doing, is, and then so you got the arms dealers are happy to do it. I mean, it's a complex issue. I understand your moral stance, but how do you tackle the World War II argument? Well, you know, first of all, when you talk about somebody running around the world killing people, how about the U.S. government? I agree. You know, the U.S. government killed probably a million people in Iraq since since they went to war against Iraq. Uh, they make uh, ISIS look like uh, the Girl Scouts. So, you know, that the U.S. government has killed millions and millions of people in its career of uh, killing and depredation. Um, Hitler, of course, was a monster. So then we, so then Roosevelt had us hook up with his pal Stalin, who was every bit as much of a monster, probably killed more people than Hitler killed. How many killed did he kill in Ukraine, right? This is, still has effects today. Eight, ten, twelve million people, we, we don't know, but it was a horrific, horrific massacre in Ukraine uh, that Stalin pulled out. The Exim Bank is in the news right now, the Export-Import Bank, it was founded by Franklin Roosevelt when he became president in 1933, specifically to fund trade and to boost the Soviet Union. That, that's, go back and look, read Wikipedia or whatever. This was the purpose of the Exim Bank. So uh, he wanted to, he, you know, he wanted to, Roosevelt saw World War II as the war, the uh, war to make the world safe for communism. So uh, they were both. So the U.S. hooked up with one monster to fight another monster. Uh, no, I, uh, my, I had a, a brother who was killed in World War II, and of course, many, many Americans died uh, in, in, in World War II. And um, you know, I, is it? Uh, it I, no, I, I think there were ways to avoid that, uh, as well as ways to avoid the other wars. I don't think war. Well, yes, it's just like World War One is ever. No, and of course, World War II was part two of World War One. Yeah, this was one long war, and uh, what the U.S. helped do uh, to the German people had very bad effects uh, later on. The the rise of Hitler to power, among other things, because of the starvation blockade that Britain and the U.S. Uh, uh, put on Germany, kept on long after. By the way, the war was over. Another six hundred thousand German civilians killed in the hunger blockade trying to make them, force them to accept the Treaty of Versailles, which was a disaster in Europe. It was a disaster in the Middle East. This is what, uh, you know, that's why where we get Iraq and these, Syria and all these countries were created as a result of the... That's why it's great that you're such a historian, not just an economist and writer, because you know this. The establishment knows this. The public doesn't know it. That World War I came into World War II and then started everything after that. And you're right. It just never turns out good in the end. Um, we can't trust them, Alex. We can't trust the government. So they all, there's always war propaganda. Ooh, the, the Russians are going to get us. The Southerners are going to get us. The uh, Spanish were going to get us. The Mexicans were going to you know, There's always some the bad guy over the next hill that you've got to give all power and devotion to the government so they can go and kill people. Well, you know, there's something wrong with that. If we just think of the basic... Sure libertarian principle, the basic, that it's never morally acceptable to act, to use violence or the threat of violence against the innocent. If You can always use it in self-defense, but uh, uh, you can't, you can't attack people. And again, in war, the vast majority of the people who were killed are sure. innocent people. And, uh, and also, again, we always have to remember, people associated with the government are making vast sums of money off war. That's well, Lou, two weeks ago... ISIS. They tried the vast to, sums of money. Yeah. Two weeks ago, they tried to float the idea 
that if we'd have taken out Assad, ISIS wouldn't have this foothold. We need to take Assad out. Now, nobody bought that, so they backed off. But a pro, they, you know, a pro-Christian pro ruler, by the way, Assad. You know, there have been Christian communities in Iraq and Syria since the time of the apostles, and they've been successful there under the Ottoman Empire, under all kinds of, all, all kinds of invasions. They never were harmed. Now they've all been destroyed ever since the U.S. invaded Iraq, and now it's making war on Syria. So, uh, um, you know, again, what they're just all you can think, folks, is assume the government is always lying to you. Maybe you don't know what the truth is. You have to do a little investigation to see the let truth. Me, let me ask you so that what, question. They're all a bunch of liars. Let me ask you a question. Why? and the U.N. even admits this, that persecution of Christians is up everywhere, peaceful ones. Why is the U.S. government, in every case I've seen, on the side of radicals to kill Christians? Our government will bend over backwards, especially under Obama, to exterminate Christian minorities. What is going on? Well, the U.S. government, of course, hates Christianity. Uh, the, the government hates the idea that people are loyal to and feel themselves responsible to an entity that is God, above the government. You know, they look back, I think all governments look back on, say, the ancient uh, Egyptians, as that was the great thing, when the government actually was God. Uh, that's the way they'd like us to feel today. They're jealous of religion, they want to take over religion, uh, and they, you know, so no, they don't mind killing Christians. Uh, they don't mind killing Muslims. Muslims have a right to life, too, by the way. It's not just Christians. Buddhists, Hindus, everybody has a right to life, no matter uh, Jewish people. Whatever their religion, they have a right to life. They have a right not to be murdered, uh, but the U.S. government is murder incorporated. It kills people all over the world. Again, sure. vast amounts of money being made out of this. You can't believe anything they say. So when they have this new bogeyman, ISIS, uh, you can just pretty much ignore what they have to say. You can certainly hope, pray that bad things don't happen to, to people in uh, Iraq. But the U.S. government ha has murdered so many people in Iraq. We're really supposed to trust the U.S.? Certainly the Iraqis don't trust the U.S. Well, that's my point, is that it's just the oxymoron. It makes my head hurt when I think about it. The paradox, our government helped create and fund these monsters to do in Syria what they're doing in Iraq. And then now we're supposed to go bomb them, but that'll be fake. They'll probably end up bombing Assad or something. It, it's just such. Well, they, are, they are. They are going. Of course, they are going to attempt to overthrow Assad. That's that's absolutely true. You know, they're they're. Uh, they're <laughs> you can't. Let's mind our own business. Who put the U.S. government in charge of the world? They're not God, even though they think they're God. Uh, they're, well, that brings me to their Ukraine. Business, what's going on in other countries? Why don't they get rid of the crime in Washington D.C.? How about uh, stopping the uh, the militarized cops in Ferguson and all the rest of? America. Uh, I noticed that some of the, the supplies now going to the uh, militarized cops include bayonets. So that'll be nice. They'll be out there with a bayonet to stab you. Uh, and we're supposed to think, of course, that's much better. That's law enforcement, unlike those horrible guys, ISIS, with their, with their knives. So uh, concentrate on what's happening to us here at home. Stop attacking people in other countries. Mind our own business. It's quite enough to mind our own business. We know that as individuals, too to uh, try to raise our families and uh, have a job, support ourselves, not, not be a burden on others, take care of our retirements, uh, uh, support our churches, um, support our communities, mow the lawn. What I mean, do you think of Rand Paul's statement? I mean, obviously some of that's politics, but at the same time, it's pretty easy to say you want to bomb ISIS. They are unsavory, but I get your point. It'll only turn into something worse and more evil. Uh, it's, just, it's just sick. No, I, I, I don't think I don't think bombing people is a good thing. I I I, I don't. It's it's murder. It's a bloody mass murder. It's not. You know, would Christ want to bomb people? I mean, why don't we ask that question? We're talking about Christians. Um, well, you know, is that that's not that's not the nonviolent way of Jesus Christ. Why don't we Why don't we try to follow that? Why is killing people always the supposed to be the answer to problems uh, throughout human history? Haven't we learned? that killing people uh, is, is not the answer to problems, and the idea that we should just be creating more hatred, and they're right to hate us if we're bombing their homes, bombing their businesses, killing Speaking their children, of war, killing the time their we've, parents. They don't like it. Sure, Very Lou strange. Rockwell is our guest, Alex Jones here. Uh, in the time we've got left, I want to spend some time on your new book, but also 
What about Ukraine? I mean, that's so obvious. People call me a Russian sympathizer or a traitor because I don't want to have nuclear war with Russia. Russia is going to a first strike doctrine to mirror our policy, the U.S. government policy. Clearly, Ukraine's been overthrown by the West. Clearly, they're trying to stir stuff up with Russia. And again, I'm not lionizing Vladimir Putin. I'm simply saying anybody can look at this and see that NATO is moving troops in, doing drills, openly moving missiles up to the border. This is not Iraq that we can just kick around for 20 years. This is Russia with nuclear weapons. Haven't they learned the lesson of Hitler and Napoleon? Well, they, they love war. And they think, you know, there are only two really large independent countries in the world anymore. There's Russia and there's China. So both are being targeted by the U.S., which sees itself as the global hegemon. The U.S. believes it should run the world. I'm sure they believe they should run the, so the solar system and the galaxy, too. But right now, they want to run, they want to run the world. They want to get rid of uh, or, or uh, certainly take out Russia and China as, as opponents of uh, U.S. hegemony. And, yeah, the U.S., uh, despite the agreement that we made with Gorbachev, that when he agreed to pull his troops out of Germany uh, and out of Eastern Europe, uh, the U.S. agreement was we will not push the boundaries of NATO up to Russia. We won't, we won't uh, make those kinds of aggressive moves. So needless to say, the U.S., like every other treaty, they don't, they don't keep their word. And uh, it's horrific what's going on. It's very scary, as you, as you point out, the potential of, of atomic war. Um, Professor Bob Higgs always points out the state is the one entity actually capable of bringing uh, to an end life on Earth. Uh, don't worry about asteroids. It's the government that can actually bring this about. For example, with its vast store piles of, uh, of uh, chemical warfare, of biological warfare, uh, of atomic weapons. Yeah, I got I mean, a feeling they may actually destroy the Earth. I mean, they are so well, they have the capability, and they're certainly morally not above it. So, yeah, it's, it's very scary business, and we have to be opposed to U.S. aggression in Ukraine. And uh, I'm sure Putin's a politician. He's, he's not a good guy, but he happens to be in the right here in the sense that uh, we are aggressing against Russia. Shouldn't be happening. It's very, very dangerous. Of course, China has got atomic weapons as well. Uh, these are these are both. Uh, how, you know, here are countries that came out of communism. Uh, and uh, still bad things about them, still bad things needless to say about the U.S. too. But they came out of communism. People are much freer and more prosperous in those countries than they were under uh, uh, Khrushchev and Mao Zedong and, and uh, dictators of that sort. So why are we welcoming them into the family of nations? Why are we wanting to trade with them? Why are we putting anti-free trade sanctions on them, which are acts of war? Uh, why are we uh, uh, egging on Japan to attack China? There's all kinds of very terrible stuff that can have just horrific effects on the life, you know, the, the, life, uh, the lives of our children and our grandchildren if there's uh, a lot of radiation in the atmosphere as the result of all the atomic weapons that exist in the hands of governments all over the world. So, you know, peace is a virtue. Uh, peace is necessary to civilization. War is the enemy of civilization. It's the enemy of freedom. It's the enemy of free enterprise. Uh, it's the enemy of everything good. So uh, when you hear people in Washington saying, let's have a war, I say to them, hey, I'll, I'll glad to pay, you know, gladly pay for you to take a rifle and go over there, buddy. But don't try to get American kids to go. Don't try to involve our people. Mind your own business if you're a politician. Don't try to make mischief. Of course, advice that's not going to be taken, but that ought to be our attitude. Well, I was reading about the, the last of the Plantagenet kings uh, who got killed in battle, and he, he certainly was corrupt and had his problems. But at least until about 500 years ago, a king had to actually be out front in the battle. And they were, uh, were routinely killed. And so it was men against men with swords, certainly ugly, horrible, brutal. I don't romanticize it. But I can understand the, you know, the, the, now it's robots, now it's drones. It's so disconnected, and the elites are so disconnected from what they're doing. But I think we're in more danger now than we ever have been. And even Secretary of Defense Hagel said the quote, "World's blowing up right now," and it's because and he's of, helping blow it up. Of course, I agree exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In closing, but they're putting Terminator into effect. The Terminator movies into effect. Skynet. They're with, with all these uh, um, uh, drones and other kinds of uh, uh, military robots that will be able to kill on their own say-so. They won't even have to tell, have a human tell them to kill. Day one, they they're making them autonomous. Kill. 
and they'll be used against us as, as well. So this is a very serious situation, something we all have to worry about. We have to try to educate ourselves. We have to oppose what the government is doing. We have to resist, peacefully resist, because, of course, they've got all the weapons. We don't have the weapons. I agree. We're almost out of time. I want to plug uh, Against the State, your new book, available at lewrockwell.com and bookstores everywhere, Amazon. Come back in the next few months, and, and uh, you can send some talking points. We've never done that. But if you sent me a b blueprint of, say, 10 points about the book, uh, we could do a whole hour specifically on your manifesto against the state, Lou Rockwell. Thank you. It'd be great to be back on the show, Alex. It's an honor to be on here today and keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. It's great to hear you just uh, absolutely uh, indict and I think successfully convict uh, those that worship at the altar of the state. And I, I just want to say a prayer for humanity that we don't let the state destroy us because you're, you're right. It's the ultimate threat. It killed the most people in the 20th century, 261 million people, according to uh, University of Hawaii. Lou Rockwell, thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. Coast to Coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Final segment. Appreciate folks holding. I, I didn't even look at Infowars.com the last 30 minutes. I usually look at it every five minutes. I got busy talking to Lou Rockwell. U.S. Army report urged preparations for troops to occupy New York City, other mega cities during collapse and civil unrest. And they're basically admitting that they believe that's what's coming. A pretty powerful article up on Infowars.com. There's another one dealing with the uh, NFL, this latest choking video, where we point out they can't blame it on the Second Amendment to their dismay. Obama blatantly lies about ISIS on television. There's a lot of key stuff. A man fakes beheading video, fools global media. That's all up on PrisonPlanet.com and Infowars.com right now. Okay, uh, Tom in California, thanks for holding her on the air. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, the cell phone operates on the same radio frequency spectrum as the human mind. Uh, that's according to Dr. Eldon Bird, who ran the radio, uh, electromagnetic uh, program for the Marine Corps. I knew that. Yeah. The electromagnetic weapons program for the United U.S. Marines. And that's not a coincidence that our cell phones operate on the same electromagnetic spectrum as our minds. And, uh, you know, look at they're given babies as soon as they're born. They tell me, they told me in the hospital, I can't take my baby out of the hospital. I've had a falling out with one of these globalists. I've had my life threatened. I had somebody come up to me in Ventura, California, telling me, look, they can give you a carcinogen. I now have blood in my urine. I've had, I have a gas, I have a leaking gas tank. Uh, my brother and I both had a falling out with this individual. We both were putting gang-stalking programs. I'm 11 Telstar on YouTube. But anyway, but despite all this, and I can't mention any names specifically because they'll just kill me. But uh, the point of it is, I had my baby in the hospital. As soon as he was born, they want to give him a, a hearing test. He can't say he can hear. He can't say anything. They said, oh, we just got to hook up this computer to his mind, put these earphones on, and just run some frequencies through his head and everything. And I said... And even if they're not bad, it's that they can put Trojan horse stuff on everything. And there's a DARPA program admitting they use cell phone frequencies to, quote, calm the public during civil emergencies. That was in the Baltimore Sun like 15 years ago. And, and it's just incredible. I appreciate your call. Interesting. Brett in California. Go ahead. Thanks for holding. Uh, hey, Alex. Thanks for taking my call. I uh, really appreciate everything you do. Don't on thank me, brother. I appreciate you putting up with me. Go ahead. Okay. All right. My name is uh, our, my name's Brett. I'm 27 years old. And I was actually one of those college graduates that Mr. Rockwell was talking about. I uh, graduated with a worthless degree that didn't take me anywhere. I ended up in a corporation. Um, I excelled really hard at the corporation, moved up the ladder very quickly, but found myself kind of compartmentalized um, with uh, the, the learned helplessness all around me, selling products that I just could not stand behind anymore. Anyways, after working like 70, 80 hours a week, making salary that could not keep up with the hours, I, uh, I committed to using marijuana at night to relax and... Um, whenever I left the corporate world, I actually started growing marijuana. So what happened? 
And uh, so anyways, I wanted to call because I didn't necessarily agree with your point on weaponized marijuana. I think what we have right now is actually the, the cleanest marijuana that we have. All right, well, here's and the deal. I know a lot of people can smoke pot. It helps them. And it's got a lot of medical benefits. I'm not going to get into that. But a lot of people I know, it ruins them. It turns them into zombies. And they're on it all the time. And marijuana is incredibly strong now. And so that was my view. But, but I hear you. I'm not look. Uh, here's the thing. I'm for decriminalizing it. I don't want to lock people up for it. It doesn't mean I have to endorse it. I mean, I don't like the vibe when I've covered marijuana conferences and stuff. And you've got 10,000 potheads there. I really don't like what it does to women. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's just, I mean, that's my personal view. I don't embrace the marijuana culture. That's what I'm saying. Um, man, I'm out of time. I want to go to Anthony and Eric and, uh, Jim, but I've got to go. I I've got a bunch of work I got to do. Um... So I'm out of time. I apologize to the callers. I didn't get to. Great job to the crew. Everybody else, want to thank you all for your prayers. And as I said, for putting up with me. Uh, Nightly News is tonight, 7 o'clock Central. God bless. The Genesis Communications Network is one of America's premier... But now, what I believe is the ultimate...